Hey guys. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, yes, the few technical glitches. Uh, it's Mika cooking at home with Mika and family. Uh, it's, not, it's a group effort. I'm just using this platform to get to friends and family and students and staff at Cambridge just to reach out and make sure that everyone has a fun time and can uh, cook some fun stuff at home. Uh, and also archive, we're on Mika Koskala on YouTube, so all our videos are uploaded to YouTube. Um, so today we're doing a fancy meal at home. It's gonna be in the luxury room home, family for four approximately with what we're providing. Uh, I'm right now, I went ahead and made ahead, I have uh, two times the recipe here of the salmon and my uh, ponju style sauce. And I wanna go through this with you. The salmon is super simple. It's boneless, skinless, kind of cut in nice little strips, as you can see over here. I like where you go. Nice little pieces that you can wrap the, you want to go to the <laughs> You can wrap the, uh, the, the, the fish with some, uh, some nori or the dosa seaweed. And uh, this is my little dressing I made here. It's tangy, it has a beautiful citrus flavor. Um, with some soy and some sesame in there. The next step that I want to go through with you guys all is my, uh, before I do the dressing, is the asparagus. So in my, my dish, we're gonna do two kind of different components, guy. Okay? We're gonna have the salmon roasted in the oven, which I'm gonna set now to about 400. Hopefully it gets up there by the time we're ready to go. I thought I said it earlier, but it did not go. Uh, we're going to roast the salmon in the oven with the asparagus. What's going to happen to the asparagus right now is we're going to blanch it. Um, what I like to do here is I have this set up already. My asparagus, they're rather thick. These are rather thick pieces. If you have tender pieces smaller than this, they need less cook time, okay? But I'm going to put these in the microwave in a second. So I have over here, okay? Over here? Yeah. Please? Uh, so I have these pieces here. These are just washed. I'm gonna take these here, and to trim these, all you do is you grab the, the, the both ends, and you just kind of go like this, and where it breaks is where the fibers end go, goes. So you won't have any kind of um, chewy pieces in your mouth. Okay? Thank you, full stuff in my face, perfect. <coughs> Turn that. And I'm just gonna be snapping these, and they snap nicely right at the, the tender point, okay? Where that fibrous material is gone. And these, just to mimic what's going there, I'm just gonna go here. So I'm just gonna toss in a bowl. This bowl, I'm gonna throw a little bit of water in there. You could do this in a stove top and just put it in some boiled water. I'm just gonna put them in the microwave for about three minutes. Not even really, but this is actually the order. Um, all I want to do is partially cook these so they get a little bit tender. I'm going to refresh them, and then when, when the salmon's ready to go in the, into the oven, I want to take these and toss them as, as a bed, like beneath the salmon on the pans. Okay, there we go. Put a little water in there. I have my hand strainer up to help the steam. Okay, it's nice and sealed. A little water bottom. Let's go for three minutes. Okay? And Kai will hear this beeping and let me know when it's done. Okay, the next step we want to is gonna be our ponzu style sauce. So what we made here. So I'm gonna take my nice little handy grater. I will absolutely love this thing. I take my lemon, lime, and orange, and I'm going to take these and quickly just zest. Most ponzus don't actually, the recipes I research don't call for any zest, but I find just leaving the zest out of the way is just a crying shame. There's a lot of flavor in there, a lot of aromatics that just goes to waste. Try to get most of the the yellow off. Don't worry about getting all of it off. You want to have some beautiful bits of the zest there. Just the lime. I love these limes and lemons and oranges. 
they're relatively fresh. These are not colded uh, fruit. So they're nice and fresh and firm. They zest very nicely. My grater is nice and sharp, I should say. Yeah. Uh, if you have a zester at home, you can use zester as well. It's more of a uh, two-handed motion. This one here is just more or less grating the brine. Orange is a little bigger, makes it a longer. Any questions at all? No, small game today. Four people watching. That's all right. It's too beautiful. Uh, but, no, we got, but we got um, Olivia. Well, Olivia's watching. Hey, well, salmon is what? Yeah. Well, it's probably wondering what Nori and is. And Paula's watching, Paula. Yeah. And then also, Lesia Stefanson. Nice. They're probably wondering what Nori is. If they haven't had sushi before, we're wrapping their, our salmon with Nori. Which Where's is the Nori? A roasted, a roasted seaweed. That's You'll find that in sushi restaurants, and hand rolls, uh, all the different kind of rice rolls. That's the wrapper that goes around. So, I've zested all my lemons. Now lemon, lime, and orange. Now when this is done, this should give us a nice, vibrant, uh, tangy kind of flavor. I have my little, where's my little juicer? There it is. If anybody has any questions, they can sure ask. And if anybody has any, um, like I'm asks here. for any other really small recipes. Uh. So I'm juicing these the lemons. This has a little bit of a, a little strainer for me. Oh, I'm losing a lot of seeds. Seeds, yeah. Thank you for showing the loss of seeds there. I oh, had a plethora of seeds in there. Wow. Put it through the strainer after. I could, yeah. That's a good idea, Kai. That's what I'll do. It's more or less like a reamer. Mm -hmm. But there's a little strainer that should catch all these. The ponzu is like a Japanese style sauce. It's very light. Um, usually there's an addition of uh, mirin, or it's like a, cook a sweet cooking wine that's used to add some uh, delicate sweetness or umami, they say. Uh, today I'm gonna be adding a bit of uh, rice wine vinegar instead. Because umami anywhere in Northern Ontario is, sorry, um, mirin is almost impossible to find. This orange is gonna add a lot of sweetness. Uh, most recipes ask for some sugar. That orange is probably good enough. And our timer's going off for the asparagus. Well, I have a little maple syrup I may add to some sweetness. It's actually a... Uh... <laughs> Joanne's saying hi. I waved at him. Ella, can you open up my, uh, sorry, my strainer up? Open up my email, please. I just want to show the recipe. Where are you, the recipe, man? <laughs> I asked for three and I just have to go delving into it. There we go. Asparagus is ready. Asparagus ready? Okay. Okay. Really gentle movements back. Okay. out. Take a quick second here. I have my my zest. It's at 210 Fahrenheit right now. Okay. Dad, don't take out the asparagus or? Yeah, let's take this, we're gonna refresh the asparagus quickly as I don't have to go too far over. So what I'm gonna do here is check one out. 
Nice and pliable. Perfect. I might as well. Parsley cooked. I'm take this and drain it out. Paula says, must smell good with all that citrus. Sure yeah. does. Oh, yeah. And add some cold water in here just to help to refresh these so that keep cooking. Because I want these to go as a bed under the salmon so that they, be, they can get some of the flavor and absorb some of the flavor from the salmon as it's cooking. So the water's a little bit warm, but I'm happy with the way it is right now. So this is going here next to my salmon. Boom. This salmon that I made the ponzu earlier, let's finish this ponzu dressing style. Uh, I have pulled up this here. So I have the juice and zest of a lemon, lime, and an orange. I'm gonna get myself my cup measures, my half cup and my teaspoon measures. I did make this earlier today to see how it would turn out. So, I'm going to add a half a cup of my soy sauce to this. One, it's a half a teaspoon, I believe. Ella could help you here if she wanted Ella to. Ella could help you, absolutely, Dad. She's right here. Yeah, it was a quarter teaspoon. Yeah, to show me it's fine. It's a quarter teaspoon of... Hi, show what's happening. Hi, please, okay? Okay. Quarter teaspoon. We got better set, I'll slow I need that, please. Kai, uh, can you please? Thank you. And one tablespoon of sesame oil. Oh. And one tablespoon of... Rice with vinegar. Which apparently was this, sold out today, all you say. Really? Yeah. Well, this is a uh, you can you can buy all around. I usually buy the seasoned. It's a splash on mint for making if you're making sushi. You just kind of drizzle it on, splash on your suit your sushi rice as your make as your uh, after it's when it's warm. To season it. That's all it's meant for. Ella, am I missing anything from that, from that dressing? You got some new oil crushed jelly flakes, you got that? Oh, some new oil, I got that, rest of the year. Yeah, we're good to go. Okay. So, this is it here. Uh, and I'm already using that right now. It's a quick little stir. It never harms to just give a little bit of a taste. Good salt to it, I like the flavor. The or this, this orange really in it balance nicely. And this is for, well this, this mirrored dressing you're making, or is this mirror, this, uh, sorry mirrored, this dressing you're making can really be used for almost anything. It can be used for salad dressing, it can be used for marinade, it's a like, Japanese style, very light and uh, authentic style of flavor with a citrus. Just to make a citrus vinaigrette very similar, so that I have garlic and ginger as well. So the next step, uh, I have salmon's done, this is done. The oven is almost a temp. The next step is to get my nori half an inch. So, I happen to have eight pieces. You may ask why I have eight pieces. Well, my family loves salmon. Ella loves salmon, she'd have two pieces by herself. So I'm making extra, extra, extra. Not that I want to deliver to anyone else, but I'm making extra in my household. So what I'm gonna do here is, this is Roasted seaweed sheets. I'm gonna take because the size of this. I'm gonna take it depends upon what your the, the characteristics are, what you like, but put a half a strip and wrap each one with a half a strip. So for eight pieces, typically the one time recipe is gonna require two sheets. It will shrink. Trust me, it will shrink. I did cut them lengthwise. If you have different cuts, like the end cuts over here, I set these aside. If you have the end cuts, they will take a thinner strip of nori. They won't take the same, uh, the same wide width. They will be totally encompassed by that. 
So I need three, four. Okay, and re remember, the nori uh, is very dry. It's, uh, it's dry, roasted. Uh, it will, if it gets wet, it'll curl up on itself. So right on my penny board is relatively really dry, but if I left it somewhere wet, it would just start curling up and folding on itself. So be careful with the nori. It's extremely flavorful. A lot of stuff. Is it hard snack. to use though? No, it's very easy. But make sure that you keep these little desiccate, these little um, packages of uh, silica. Put it into your baggie. And for this recipe, I need only two sheets. We have Actually, a question. Use four sheets. Yes. Would chicken be good for? Would be a good Would would chicken be a good substitute for fish? You could do it. Cookie times would vary. This recipe is about fifteen minutes. I'm asking, lying for. The chicken, unfortunately, has to cook right through. Salmon, on the salmon nicely, you can do like medium, medium rare, with a little bit of a pink strip in the middle, kind of like beef. So Whereas long as the chicken, chicken got to what, 10 Yeah, 165 for the chicken, is what you want chicken breast or thighs. And, the, and that's the difference. I wouldn't necessarily say that nori would be the should be beard theory thing, but this kind of sauce, you can use the chicken um, and just kind of marinate it and roast it that way. Thank you. Um, so, okay. with that being said, Ella, can I the tray, please? Trace? Yep. Chris so, is saying hi. Howdy. So, because we're in double duty here, I'm going to double it up. Okay? So, just my asparagus here, it's a little bit limp because I blanched it. I'm just going to put a little salt and a little pepper on all of it, just to make sure that the seasoning got through this too. Avocado oil, rather neutral avocado oil, not like extra virgin olive oil that has a lot of bitter flavor to it. You want where it is? I'm gonna lift my fingers earlier. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. This is like live production here, so no, I'm trying to rush through a little bit. I make sure that I wash my hands. Make sure. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, A, B, C, D, same kind of thing. Almost at temp. All right. Okay. Perfect timing. Awesome. So, what I'm going to do here. Oh, of course, well, so, yes, we're going to, okay. So, I'm going to toss this quickly here. I like parchment paper. It really is a great saving grace. So what I can do here is kind of divide this amongst the two. It just, it, by doing this in half, it's gonna help me out. This is a, approximately one pound of asparagus. Uh, again, I'm doing double because we're really gonna, gonna eat this tonight and tomorrow. Enjoy it. We're gonna really enjoy this. Okay, so here we go. All right. And all it is is taking this here and you might fold it over so that you're it's in the bottom end. I can get a good camera angle. No? No. You don't have to wet it or anything, it's gonna sit on top right Oh, it's nice. Yeah. A little bit of it fell. It's in here. Again, I keep doing this. What, I'm, what I want to do is try to have the presentation side up. So I want to have <coughs> so that this is going to wet off all oh. on its own. I to ask if it's a dress up dinner. Uh, no, not my house, anyways. <laughs> well, it should be. The table's dressed beautifully. Can I show so it? Can I show you, Kai? Table. Yes, but daddy's doing more important things over there. So with the all the moisture, these are start, they're, they are going to adhere to themselves. And put it down like this. And I kind of go over top, and fold over top, and just have this fold in the bottom. Okay, you see the the salmon has like a rounded edge and the skin edge. The skin's gonna be the bottom side. The same thing if you were gonna be searing uh, fish, 
you'd usually do the, unless you're crisping the skin, you're gonna do the presentation side down first. Can That's you eat the skin? You can eat the skin. It should be scaled. Like this? Well, this is, there's no skin on it, buddy. Mm. This is no skin on it. But there's a bit of, Kai, Kai brings up a point though. There's a little brown fat in there. Um, from what I've been told and researched that uh, any kind of toxins like mercury or whatnot are kind of kept in the fat. So that brown fat is something you just don't want to ingest really. There you go. But I still eat it at camp and stuff. Not really. really? Yeah. You do? Love, buddy. Okay, so here we go. Boom, like that. They will really adhere themselves. My oven is at temperature and we're not out of the woods yet. If you're trying to make this for a special dinner for a family, for a girlfriend, for a boyfriend, for Father's Day. Father's Day. Oh, the Father's Dad, Day. Dad, why are you saying boyfriend girlfriend? It's quarantine. Who knows? Well, they could be living with their boyfriend girlfriend. Oh, uh, true. People could be watching this on YouTube later after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When we're all famous. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so I'm wiping this quickly here. And. I feel confident that we're prepped for my cauliflower risotto to go with this. So my oven's at temp. I'm gonna fire in my my two pans in the oven, but first I'm gonna get my, my pan ready here. So give me one second. I want to feel confident in this next time. And so this kind of looks like roughly. Uh, Ella, do you have any sesame seeds? Oh, uh, where would we find those? I know. Al, can you hold the camera? Will you find in the freezer? Yes. Okay. Al, can you just come and hold the camera? In the freezer or Ella. up in the cupboard? I actually think they're up in the baking cupboard. This is not like a super, you know, not a big budget for this production, so I have no assistance. So ah. I want to go and volunteer to help me. Volunteer. Voluntold. 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 Let me volunteer for this. Uh, check on the cover up top. Yeah. Okay, so this is. I want to take this. I want to sprinkle a few sesame seeds, seeds once I find them on top of each piece and then the oven. But before then, I want to show you here. Come follow me. So I have my food processor out. You may recall we did this with uh, cauliflower steamed. No. But this is what we get if it's grated. This is going to be our cauliflower risotto. It does a really good job, has a very similar texture. Oh, too close has a very similar texture to rice or risotto, but not the same starchy quality. Very low carb, I really enjoy it. So, my grazing attachment is in there. Terrible. It's everything. Uh, that'll work. Put a little on there. It's garlic for the house. There are black and white. Just, just on top of the sandwich, please. Perfect. Nice one. Here, buddy. It's the spices from the everything bagel. A quick little hand oh, wash here. Okay. okay. So, mom, can you take those two pans? And yep. just put me out, please. Yep. Top and middle? Sure. I remember it's been a little bit temperamental. And it likes to kind of surprise us by going on full blast on uh, broil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great times. Hey, so my pan is on. So my set, okay? My pan is on. I have my uh, salmon and asparagus in the oven right now. I have my little bit adequate amount of cauliflower. Now I have my onion and my garlic and my mince here. So with this pan, which I have onto medium pan, I'm gonna back up a little bit, sir. Uh, I'm gonna get my, my favorite cooking spoon. This one here, favorite one ever. 
scent, I'm going to add some butter. Oh my god, this is sick. This is... Too close to the oven, I think. Two to four tablespoons, or to however much you want to add, really. That's not why I work with this. Uh, I'm going to add some olive oil. I'm going to risotto. Again, this is what my family loves. We love our cauliflower risotto with mushrooms, peppers, kale, whatever it may be, spinach. So I'm just adding this stuff in. So I have the... So hi, I have this here going. Uh, Monica just said she needs help using fresh herbs. Uh, but depends on the flavor you're looking for. So I have this all in. That's a butter and olive oil. I'm adding some onions and garlic. I'm gonna soften these up. Could you give me the uh, olive oil, please? Oh, sorry, the um, chicken stock, please, the texture pack down below. Thank you. Mmm, smells good. Onions always smell amazing. So we're gonna set the timer to about that's set to 14, sorry. Let's go 14 minutes. It's been there for just a little bit of time already. Can other stock be used? Uh, vegetable stock, mushroom stock. Try not to use beef stock. If you have to use white wine. You'll see when we cook this out, this, uh, this recipe, use your risotto when you're making it requires a lot of uh, a lot of liquid to absorb into the uh, rice noodle the, the rice uh, sorry the arboreal rice whatever starch you is using and that's what then we use rice is like three to one for normal rice arboreal it requires a little less liquid but you do have to add the liquid so the let's say I have like two cups of arboreal rice you need like you need a liter of liquid roughly it's double that at least um, this one here, because what we're trying to do with, it, with this cauliflower is we're trying to cook out the, the, the water that's inside. And you'll see what happens shortly. Vivian's asking if seafood stock would be too strong. You could use, use seafood stock if you wanted to. If, if that's what your flavor is and your, again, what your people are expecting. If it's really heavy shrimp or crab flavored, and you have allergy issues, then that and that's not the best thing to go with. If you're doing it and it's like a, it's just a fish stock with some uh, basic, like you know, the like fish fumet, which is like you know, fish heads, uh, bones, tails, um, those, and some white wine with some lime, lemon, and mirepoix, that is totally fine. It's gonna be, it's, it should be rather melancholy. It should be not too dominant, not too dominant of a flavor. But once you start getting away from that with things that are. Uh, Let's say a full broth, unless that's what you what your intention is. I'm just showing you a method here. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna add in, and these is gonna really fill my pan up really well. The same thing with making risotto is that you're what do you want these? is that you're really relying on uh, the liquid, and you're trying to coat every bit of cauliflower within reason with some of the, the flavor. So garlic, onion, the oils, lots of salt and pepper in there as well. Again, this is not like, we're not, we're adding a lot of salt and pepper. I'm not too afraid of it. I've, I've made this before. Um, if anything, just add small bits of salt and pepper as you go along and building it. Just try realizing the points of, uh, points of contact you may have. You may notice in the ponzu sauce and the salmon, there was no salt and pepper added at all. The soy sauce had more than enough salt. Um, and, the, and the pepper, I had a crushed chilies into there as well. So I didn't need any of that flavor. That is, it was marinated for a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes. When it comes to fish and marinating times, fish is not something you want to marinate for longer, unless you're cooking it in an acid. Like, like you're doing like a, 
uh, ceviche, where you're cooking in lime juice. That's more or less, you're taking it in the, the, the high acidity is cooking the fish. It'll actually happen, it'll, fir it'll firm the, fr the flesh of the fish up. So fish, salmon, uh, some of the white fish, fresh fish, 20 minutes, 30 minutes is all you need to marinate. That's all you need, really. Okay. I have two full heads, and the rest of the uh, are one to two, depending on the size. We're feeding an army here, like always. Plus leftovers. So I add a little more butter to this. You can see it's browning a bit. I don't want it to burn. The size of pan is important. Uh, this one here is just, this is actually just big. I've actually loaded this pan up a lot more than I have right now. Now you did ask for comments on upcoming things, but and Monica's mentioning that She'd like you to talk about uh, working with fresh herbs, especially the leafy ones that have st the woody stems. Cool, so. yeah. That is, that's the fun one. A lot of fun use of the herbs. A lot of different uh, areas and different uh, parts of the world will use different herbs more predominantly. Depending upon the flavors you're going for. And as you see now, I'm getting more color to this, mainly because I'm coating all of the risotto. So in order to stop this from burning, number one, because I have in relatively high heat, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add a little, once I kind of feel as though I have the simmer to the risotto, mostly kind of cooked out. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was white wine. Uh, you take the risotto, and even this recipe here, I usually like a little bit of white wine. So I'm just gonna take... It's not necessary, no, no right? No, a small splash of white wine. This is just gonna cook out. Now remember, this is just our side dish that's going along with our salmon. So this is our side dish. I'm gonna keep it relatively neutral in color. Nutty mushrooms or asparagus or peppers or parsley. So we're kind of neutral in color. It's gonna be a base. Because on top of the salmon, I'm gonna have the uh, the nice sorry, on top of the, the, the side dish, I'll have this piece of salmon with a pink color with the nori wrapped around it with the sprinkles of sesame, and then I'll have some green on top and then small spread piece of asparagus. It's gonna look very nice and beautiful, and it's gonna be a different kind of flavor than you're used to every day. Uh, people don't often cook this at home. Uh, it's a bit extravagant, but it's just one of the nice little things that we're doing here. Hopefully, well, it's been a little while now, but you know, 30, 40 minutes. Okay, so my white wine's kind of cooked out. My pan, the bottom, as you see, is rather dry. I have a little, I'm not gonna heat the chicken broth. If you were doing risotto, you would have it heated. I'm adding a little bit in there. I'm gonna crank my heat, because I want to finish the same time I have my, my, my salmon out. And we have done this res this risotto recipe outside over a fire. We've done this uh, many different ways. Having a little closer, you see the bottom here. You see risotto tends to be a little soupy and then it absorbs. This one here, I'm trying to just kind of help to steam it. And I don't want to in a day with too much. The, the chicken broth is maybe about a cup. I added maybe half a cup in there. You can overdo the liquid. Yeah, you can overdo it. Just a little bit, and that's it. You have no more chicken broth left, by the way. Oh, it's good. Thank you. Thanks, okay. buddy. Thank you. Mr. Inventory Man. Always tell us when it's the last item. Yeah. Something I miss in the Student Life Center at Cambrian. Those last minute things. Any questions up to this point? Anyone has? Um, no, not so far. Let me grab a pair of tongs. Okay, so we look in the oven here. There you go. Ooh. Cooking nicely, look at that. They are almost done, and we're six minutes away. I may have to turn it off, we'll see. And just watching. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and Tina.
Tina Duncan. Mm -hmm. Oh, my cousin Tina. Okay, so again, my risotto. The, what I was trying to get to with, I, I spoke with my uh, executive sous chef, Leanne, and we discussed this. Had the risotto, I, we just love this. But again, we did the recipe before the cauliflower puree, which would be a great addition if you just if you want a nice plate of presents. Another idea for this would be if you had uh, some noodles or uh, some sheer talking noodles for a low carb, you would drain them, uh, you pan, then pan fry them, but some of this ponzu After dressing, some. as you're frying it, you toss it in to give more flavor to noodles. Because who wants like, flavor of unflavored noodles, like just plain pasta is the, you need sauce. This would add a punch of flavor, and that would be like your, the base of your dish. The very base of your dish would be your noodles, and then put your piece of salmon on top, your asparagus around, and there we go. Um, Ella, could you just send me, please, some green onions? Yep. Add a little plant, can I show them a plant? Sure, yeah, yeah. show them our successful plants over there. We had more before, but they died. But our onions have been doing pretty well. And you just snip you them and they grow right back. Yeah, you, you sprout, they sprout and then you cut them off and then you can use them and then come back and they, and then they go back. We're, we're gonna plant those, right Ella? To see yeah. if they grow outside and see if they keep reproducing for us? You're going down, buddy. Okay. Oh, Robert, <laughs> he's getting hungry. Robert who? You're Robert. Oh, right on. You must have good Wi-Fi today. <laughs> okay. Do we need to chop them up? Yes, let's show them quick stuff, okay? Um, so, we have a question. Where are we? What can I, uh, this is from Natalia Vian. So she says, what can I add to make the cauliflower risotto creamy like, like one with rice, ah, whipping cream? she's reading your mind. Yes, so... I'm not afraid of moving with the cream, okay? So this one here, if I tasted this, I've added some salt and pepper in here. I'm gonna take this here quickly and just give a quick taste. Very tender. Salt's good. And a little bit from this here. I'm only measuring because I want to see what it looks like. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. And look how this is going to simmer a little bit. I'm going to turn the heat down a bit now. We're almost finished. Like, literally, I'm turning, like, I think the oven was on for 15 minutes. I have 12 and a half. I'm turning the oven off. I am not liking when more I'm at. Can we go see you? Uh, one second. Can Butter? Heat in there, bud. Okay, more butter. Some butter and some parm cheese. Mimi would say, never too much butter. No. Put that butter in there. My dad likes Parmesan cheese, as you can see. It adds a boost of flavor. It's the nice, like, uh, I think flavors. it helps thicken things up, too. It thickens things up, too. And it'll, it kind of brings in the things all together. You could put some herbs in there, that, like some dill if you wanted to, whatever else. I'm just keeping this oh, simple. Nice and simple. Nice and simple today. Where it's gonna, well, it's supposed to rain today at one point, but uh, it's kind of overcast day today. We're not gonna have a barbecue. Maybe next week. We'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, I love the texture of that. Let's check in the oven. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. <whistles> hey, that's off. The oven's off. So the next thing I do quickly is just do a little garnish. If you have some fresh herbs, cut, can you fold it please? Yep, I would. Fresh herbs, you could use the fresh herbs that are, that are introduced. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I like to do with some green onions, is kind of cut them lengthwise like this. Nice thin little slivers, and they tend to curl up on themselves. So they kind of make now, these are very, very small. If they're larger, I would have them cut in half and lengthened. But they tend to want to curl up on themselves. 
You always want to bring this up. Joanne Boudreaux says barbecuing techniques. I think she's on to something for that. Well, it's, we, have, we have Priscilla Friday with no uh, weather warnings. or. Monica also said hot dog Friday, so we could do that too. <laughs> Put hot dogs in the grill. We could mix them. Dad's new fire pit. Oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, we made a fire so, pit. Anyways, this is just a little bit of like a, like a chiffonade of green onion. Not really a proper one because I'm just kind of hacking at this right now because I'm watching my rice kind of simmer away and my stuff's resting. And I think with that, we are for fame. So you see how when I naturally cut it, it tends to want to curl on itself, which is kind of cool because when you're building something uh, with some height, you don't want to have it a little flat. You want to have a little height to things, okay? See, it'll kind of stand on its own like that. So, let's get a plate. And let's pretend that we were, we're a uh, young daughter at home trying to prepare a beautiful supper for her family. And, okay, wait, Dad, Mom, I'm gonna make a nice plate for you. Hold on a second. So, the first thing I do is get it in ready, ready to go. So back up a little, Kai. I'm grabbing one of my... Here. So, I need to lay out my plates, have them all ready to go, all four at a time. But right here, I'm just going to show you quickly. I take first my base here. I'm going to try to keep it clean. I'm going to keep it kind of cent on the center almost. Okay? You can use a form if you wanted to. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to take a nice piece of salmon. It's not on top. A few more pieces of my roasted asparagus. Again, it's all about uh, just, you want to look as though it's kind of placed but not placed. If there's a big bunch of logs, it looks like a log cabin. That's not what I want going for. And then on top, you can see it on top, a little bit of this. And now I have my extra ponzu. Do not use the raw, the, the, the raw marinade. Don't use the raw marinade. I'm using stuff I reserved. And you can take a little bit of this here. With a clean spoon, not the one I taste it with. And you can take this and just drizzle on top, kind of brown. Okay? And I did just post the uh, ingredient list and, and sort of, you know, recipe in the comments for everyone. And with that, from... Let's bring it onto the table. From my house to yours, uh, I wish you a bon appetit. Here. Uh, this is for Ella, probably. Yay! I'll move to my spot after, but it's fine. Here you go, Ella Bella. Yay, thank you. That's awesome. Wow. It does look awesome. So anyways, enjoy. Uh, I wish you the best. Have a, have a great weekend, and we'll see you all next week.